Okay, hi guys, uh, my name is Dennis Kappen. And uh, interestingly, like, uh, it's really awesome to share the stage with uh, a lot of awesome speakers here. And uh, as Bob mentioned, that it's an interesting topic uh, that I have for, for you today. And uh, Mike Amender said in his, uh, in his keynote speak, speak that, uh, that it's interesting that he wants to make players who are playing Dota to be nice to each other, you know? But personally, I play games because I want to be the shit out of somebody in a, in, a, in a gaming world, you know, because either I went my frustrations with my kids or my spouse or uh, my students uh, who, are not, who are not helping me out in terms of doing my assignments and, uh, in the right manner. So I want to be bad, you know, when I'm playing a game. So that's, that's my interest of playing a game personally. So I want to engage you in terms of like a simple exercise here. Uh, the topic is booing and cheering. So I want you guys to vent your frustration right now by booing right now. You know, let's just start booing, you know. So, okay. okay. Now how about some cheers now? How about some cheering in, in a certain, certain manner? Okay. So, but again here, this was solicited by me as, a, as an individual. And uh, there is a big difference between solicitation, um, booing and cheering, versus actually being uh, a player in terms of an audience scenario and you being a spectator but still engaging in, in gameplay. So that was the purpose of our paper here in terms of trying to understand how booze and cheers from an audience scenario can perhaps influence a player experience here. Myself, my background, I'm an industrial designer. I teach industrial design at Humber College. And uh, I'm also a concept artist uh, you know, doing scenarios for, 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 for companies. And uh, my supervisor is Dr. Leonard Nake. So essentially trying, trying to understand the concept of uh, player experience and social experience design is what uh, this paper is all about. So from that purpose here, what I'm going to go through is Trying to, trying to go through some of our motivations, some of our related work, uh, look at our approach, uh, our uh, conclusions, and maybe question as a session where perhaps I can blame you for my performance or not performance because of all the cheers and booze that you've already done. So, a few take, key takeaways right from the very beginning here. Look, we want to look at positive and negative influence um, activities of, of audiences. We also want to look at what a silent audience would do when you're actually taking part in a, in a co-located gaming experience. We also wanted to understand the relevance of social experience versus player experience from the context of actually gaming. So uh, we all know that uh, what is our key motivation here from the point of view of uh, was from the point of view of social facilitation and gameplay. Uh, we know that audience responses have been studied by in different environments before. Uh, social facilitation theory has been around for so many years as Zhang in 1965 posited that audience presence leads to arousal when, and, if the, and if the responses are positive or, or correct, it leads to social, uh, social facilitation and if the response is negative, it leads to uh, social inhibition. So on that purpose, uh, this concept of social facilitation has been studied by many, many researchers in many areas, like for example, in performing arts, like in comedy clubs and in multimedia presentations like this, for example, people not being, uh, not being in sync with the presenter and that becoming a, an interesting concept for, for as, a, as a point of study. So that was done by uh, Kimball in 1992 and multimedia presentations was done by Webster uh, and all in 1997. So from our perspective, we were also interested in actually peep, a play between people and the relationship between people watching play. So that becomes a very interesting concept for us as researchers to look at how to influence and how to get the audience into game uh, into gameplay in the form of game mechanics. So. Interestingly, a Kickstarter-funded project called Sprouts uh, Friends was aimed to gaming together with friends who are there with you in person or competing in front of a cheering crowd. Um, interestingly, our rationale for research exploration Understanding the relationship between audience and player experience. Understanding the relationship between presence and influence of an audience and how it could work in terms of from a game designer's perspective. And also we want to understand are there different types of audience activities that can perhaps influence or cause decrements in, in gameplay from a, from a player perspective. Butler and Bumeister's work in 1998 posited that supportive audiences lead to unexpected performance decrements 
That means for a skill-based task, participants are more likely to fail when observed by a supportive audience, interestingly. And uh, when you look at choking as a definition, as presented by them, they said that performance failure under pressure in front of an audience can also be a significant factor in contributing to, to, the, to the audience uh, player interaction or performer audience interaction. Uh, we all know that uh, from the past uh, information uh, in the 2010 Winter Olympics, uh, Canada gained the most number of medals um, compared to the earlier um, either, either the Summer Games or the Winter Olympics that, that, that happened uh, historically. Interestingly also, research done by Masters in 1992 indicated that skill failure occurs when performers attempt to control motor performance using explicit knowledge. They also inter interestingly presented that skill acquired with minimal meta-knowledge, as in, for example, like playing table tennis, you know, will remain robust irrespective of the audience type, for example. And this has been studied by many researchers in terms of like sporting e events. Uh, there's been uh, also studies on uh, spectator fun in terms of uh, StarCraft, uh, in terms of the StarCraft and the audience uh, interaction in, in, in relationship to that specific uh, specific game. So for us, what we did to do, or what we decided to do was, we had a game that was built at, uh, at uh, UIT called as Magic Duel, where it was a game that was supposed to be play, uh, played in co-located spaces, where players essentially uh, duel each other using magic spells. And uh, it's a two-person game, and they come up with spells and with hand gestures, and they duel each other uh, ca uh, by by casting spells, and uh, here this is the uh, uh, situation in a in our lab where we have the player on the on uh, either on uh, in the blue area, which is a which is a game area, and this this is the other gaming area for the player. You have the player standing on both sides of the screen, and technically the screen would have to be separated by uh, by a by a divider, a partition partition, so that it doesn't actually uh, interfere with the player's performance here. So, in the case of this initial setup, we had about four settings in in at UIT where we did one in the foyer of UIT where we had this game set up, and it was an interesting concept uh, to see how uh, the the players played, and at the same time we found that the game engendered a lot of cheering and support by people just walking around and it helps us to understand that hey perhaps there is something that we can we can uh, interestingly investigate here from the point of view of uh, understanding whether player experience um, improves or decreases in a co-located space as opposed to the earlier presentation earlier information that was given to you uh, on my earlier slide where it was actually studied for arts and performance so I want to show you a quick demo of uh, Magic Duel. I'm, I'm at max of the sound. Oh. So here again, the the idea was essentially players would play each other and they would use their gestures to actually uh, throw spells at each other like the uh, there were three elemental types one was uh, earth fire and and ice and in that in that terms you would actually duel each other by uh, by through your computer screens and it became interesting uh, to look at how the players could either dodge a, a spell that is coming to you. We also found that there was a lot of exertion in terms of the, some of these games when it was being played and it would tire the players out also in terms of uh, understanding or trying to dodge some of these uh, spells that, are, that were coming to you. Now, 
we wanted to use this specific game because of the interesting aspect of uh, being able to see how the players and the audience in interacted with, with each other. So we had two studies here. We had a pilot study which was in a uh, conference situation and uh, which allowed us to understand a few things about how this could work in a co-located space in a controlled environment. So from our pilot study, what we did is that we wanted to understand whether does audience presence actually influence uh, a player player performance, uh, player engagement. So we used uh, the questionnaire study uh, called as the use questionnaire. Essentially, uh, it stands for usability, satisfaction, and ease of use. But we also extended that questionnaire from by adding uh, audience influence questions in order to understand whether the players would be really um, uh, what do you call affected by the presence of an audience, would the pre presence of an audience make them nervous, or uh, whether they would really be uh, would have a preference to actually play on their own. So you can see here from the categories uh, that we have here, we had. Uh, 10 questions on audience influence, uh, nine of them were negative, so we had one positive question which we inversed in terms of like trying to find out whether the audience presence actually uh, affected the, uh, the, the player performance or not. So it was interesting to note that the presence of onlookers did not cause the players to be, uh, to be nervous and that the gamers were not negatively affected by the presence of onlookers or watchers as, as we call it. From here, we decided to do an exploratory study in a lab environment where we decided to characterize the audience types into very basic characteristics such as a silent audience, a positive audience, and a negative audience here. I do understand that we, we understand that this is not the entire broad spectrum of all types of audiences that can be present in a, in a situation like this or in a co-located game space with audience. So we, we used um, within subjects repeated measures design where uh, we had uh, Two players uh, play the game, and it, this was a setup where we had in the uh, in the in the lab, where we had the audience to be um, to be present on both sides of the uh, of the play area, and the players were present in the area as marked as X, and it's kind of like a similar area as because uh, because this where both the players were playing and the and the audiences were present in in the in the in the peripheral vision of the of the player. Now, based on Butler and, uh, and Law's uh, experiment, we use scripted responses here. So we wanted to understand that since they use scripted responses, we also wanted to use scripted uh, responses for the audiences in terms of understanding whether positive reactions from an audience would actually uh, influence gameplay or not, or whether negative uh, booing would actually influence uh, or detract from their gameplay. So in this case, uh, we had... Uh, Condition one, for example, we had both the players playing uh, the Magic Duel uh, play. Further on, we had uh, them uh, stop for five minutes, play for five minutes, and uh, we had them play the flow shot scale, the uh, immersion questionnaire. We also had them answer the uh, audience influence questions that we had, and final game rating questions that were also present in the entire bank of questions that was there for uh, the uh, players. <coughs> And then uh, we went on to condition two, uh, which uh, which was then repeated for all of the uh, of the four conditions. And then finally, we ended up with interviewing each of the players for uh, their effects and their responses from the point of view of either game interaction or game experience uh, perspective. Uh, this is a quick uh, uh, example of uh, our results from the quantitative information, and uh, we found that. Uh, the exploratory uh, findings were inter very interesting that the silent audiences posed some sort of like an eerie or uncomfortable feeling uh, which affected player engagement. Positive audiences uh, was a distraction um, wherein the players tended to tune out their comments and thereby increasing uh, engagement. Comments from negative audiences also forced the players to try and improve their effort in actually um, playing the game, which helped to increase uh, player engagement and overcome the negative effects from the audiences. So from here, 
we also understand that audience presence enables some sort of relationship between player game and the system. Uh, we also understand that an active audience, in terms of being a positive or a negative audience, is more preferred than being subject, subjected to a silent audience in terms of uh, in, the, in terms of the social spatial game environment. We also wanted to under, we also found that player motivation, in terms of a negative audience, was even much better because the players tended to use the negative comments as uh, some sort of like an encouragement to overcome the negative comments made by the player, made by the audiences, so that they can improve their effort in actually playing the game. In terms of the gaming context, we were actually under interested in understanding the social experience aspect of it. How does the presence of an audience actually relate to these, uh, uh, these specific game situ situations? But we obviously, as we all know, based on our experience earlier on in terms of like the solicited responses from you, uh, we know that audience types that we presented here do not uh, express the entire spectrum of all types of audience characteristics available in this in this uh, in this scenario. Our experiment uh, had only three audience members, and we know that it's quite a small number, but we used uh, information from Knowles et al. in 1983, where they used two, four, or eight number of people as audience members in order to uh, understand or take part in the study. Our study also used uh, male participants, so we would like to also try and further this research by looking at um, how female participants uh, would react under audience influence, audience, audience comments, and how it will actually take place in, uh, in helping us understand their reactions to uh, the audience uh, challenging uh, situations. Future work, we also understand that this is very critical information here from our perspective because we're always interested in understanding how players and people interact while in play um, in a social space. So it could be a very interesting scenario where game designers could actually interject um, the presence of an audience to be either positive or negative in terms of understanding how that could influence game mechanics and hence further on take, take part in terms of understanding how player ex experience is afforded by by either audience, audience situations in any situation that we have. Finally, in concluding, um, we have seen from this, uh, from our simple exploratory experiment, that effects of silent, positive, and negative audience is very critical in terms of understanding how a player performs in terms of our simple uh, magic duel game that we had. This is just the beginning for us in terms of understanding a social uh, um, experience in terms of understanding player experience with respect to how we could interrelate how a player plays with respect to interjecting audience uh, characteristics into our gameplay. Thank you very much for, uh, for uh, listening. And <laughs>